This is Aswad's home patch, Ladbroke Grove, West London. 14 years ago, the band played their first gig at Acklam Hall, West 10. This year, Aswad had their first hit with Don't Turn Around and finally achieved the number one status they've long deserved as Britain's premier reggae band. In fact, across vast areas of London, they've long been regarded as literally the biggest group on the planet. We talked to them at the Crucial Art Gallery. Is it any coincidence drumming that, that the two singles at the moment are, have got your slightly sweeter mood bass on them? Is that a deliberate ploy? I wouldn't say deliberate. I mean, from the year, from the day one, I mean, Wings have been sharing like lead vocals on certain tracks. I mean, the way we work it out is if we write a song, then we decide whose voice suits it more. And it might not be either of us, it might be Tony's. And so Tony would do it, which he hasn't really done often, but he's done it now. <laughs> but I mean, it's just, it's, it's, we do it that way, whoever it suits does it, you know? We've got many angles we can take, which is what makes as well. That is, that is as well. Yeah. And that's been the important thing from, from day one. That uh, when people are now saying, well, you know, this is slightly sweeter, you've got tracks like Didn't Know at the Time, Irie Woman, we, we, we have always been, had that versatility. Would uh, a so-called militant single with a Brinsley lead vocal on it, like, say, Justice on the new album, mean true success for Aswad? Obviously, yeah, I'd, I'd love to. I'd love to see that. I mean, uh, you know, the time will come on that. You know, I look at the whole the whole pop music scene, it's right? It's changing all the time, and it's been totally influenced by reggae. Yeah. You know, and we were in it's Europe, fun. and I, I I said to some people, "Dub is a reggae word," and they said, "What? No, it's not." I said, see, "Dub is a reggae <laughs> word." The twelve inch single when we were at CBS, we said, "Listen, reggae punters buy their music on twelve inch single." Reason being is that to cut, we love the heavy bass, right? On a 12 inch, you can cut your bass track a lot wider, or you can cut the actual grooves wider, heavier bass. Um, CBS said no. Seven inch singles are the what the charts are, are, are judged by, obviously. So, I mean, I can understand them for saying that. But now in 88, 12 inch singles are the norm. Michael Jackson's got dub on the back of his record. Rapping comes you know? from <laughs> Jamaica. It's, a, it's originally toasted. toasted. It's a change of room. You know? Roy, Big U, Bob Marley. He was the, the biggest reggae star ever. No one has, has managed to cross over as many market barriers as him. Oh. And, and until somebody does, does that mean that reggae's development would be stilted? No, I mean, oh, you see, Bob is, Bob is, is there waving the flag, right? He's there, he's opened many doors yeah. for us, right? It is for us to try to the best of our ability to continue that, um, in the sense of, of as, as we said with Bob, to make good music that will stand the test of time. Um, I think in no way does Bob hinder any reggae act. If anything, he helps them. The greatest thing that I can really see is that a lot of kids who like have been playing music for years and they want to play music and it's been a hard slog. All I can say is like, look at us as an example because like, we've been slogging away for 14 years and it doesn't matter what anyone thinks, we haven't had it easy. It has been a slog. It has <laughs> been a slog and it just says, well, don't give up.